welcome to lecture 35 the last lecture of week 7 so we are talking about temperature measuring instruments and we have talked about temperature measurements based on thermal expansion of materials thermal expansion of solid thermal thermal expansion of liquid and thermal expansion of gas so let us again look at our classification so we have talked about biometric thermometers under solid expansion we have talked about liquid in glass and liquid in metal or pressure thermometers we have talked about gas expansion thermometers namely gas thermometers and vapor pressure thermometers so today we'll talk about some more aspects of liquid expansion thermometers and gas expansion thermometers liquid expansion thermometers and gas expansion thermometers are collectively known as field system thermometers now this field system thermometers have certain errors associated with them so first we'll talk about the errors associated with the field system thermometers before that we'll also talk about some classification of field system thermometers and then finally we'll take a numerical example to understand more about the different errors associated with the field system thermometers so in today's lecture we are talking about field system thermometers by which we mean liquid field thermometers as well as gas field thermometers so liquid liquid in liquid field thermometers vapor pressure thermometers as well as gas field thermometers all we are collectively talking about field system thermometers now there are various types of field system thermometers as we discussed liquid in glass thermometers liquid in metal thermometers also known as pressure thermometers constant volume gas thermometers and vapor pressure thermometers and all these we are we have discussed already now some general characteristics of this field system thermometers they are common temperature measuring devices quite rugged cheap need no maintenance fairly good response accuracy and sensitivity is okay but not great or very good as compared to temperature measuring instruments which are electrical types we'll talk about such electrical types instruments later field system thermometers are self contained and self operated no auxiliary power source is required range is limited by the thermometer fluid total replacement is needed in case of failure remote indication up to about 100 meter is possible with extended capillary lines so these are some general characteristics of field system thermometers now there are a lot of information on this slide because i wanted to put a classification proposed by scientific apparatus manufacturers association and i want to put all the classifications in one slide only the scientific apparatus manufacturers association classifies field system thermometers as follows class 1 class 2 class 3 class 4 class 5 class 1 liquid field thermometers 
which are filled with a non metallic liquid and operate on the principle of liquid expansion are class 1 field system thermometers. So, mercury field thermometer is not included here. So, the class 1 field system thermometers are all liquid field thermometers which are filled with a non metallic liquid and operate on the principle of liquid expansion. This does not include mercury field thermometers. Class 2 field system thermometers are vapor pressure thermometers. So, they are partially filled with volatile liquid operates on the principle of vapor pressure, change of vapor pressure with change in temperature. Class 3 field system thermometers are gas thermometers. It operates on the principle of pressure change with temperature at constant volume. Class 4 is mercury field thermometers, class 5 is also mercury field thermometers. So, mercury field thermometers are filled with mercury or mercury thallium eutectic amalgam and operates on the principle of liquid expansion. The manufacturers of American institute, the manufacturers of American instruments classify as mercury field thermometers as class 4, but the scientific apparatus manufacturers association classifies the mercury field thermometer as class 5. So, mercury field thermometers are known as both class 4 and class 5. The manufacturers of American instruments classify as mercury field thermometers as class 4, but the scientific apparatus manufacturers association classifies mercury, flood, mercury field thermometers as class 5 field system thermometer. But there is no confusion about class 1, class 2 and class 3. Now, there are certain errors which may be associated with field system thermometers. So, we should know what are those common errors and how to cope up with these errors or how to reduce this, this error. The common errors in field system thermometers arise due to effect of ambient temperature. We have talked about this on several occasions. Effect of elevation also known as head effect, the barometric effect, the immersion effect, the radiation effect. So, there are five different common errors in field system thermometers. Effect of ambient temperature, head or elevation effect, barometric effect, immersion effect and radiation effect. Now, let us talk about each in turn. We start with effect of ambient temperature. A change in ambient temperature will cause volume changes in the capillary and the pressure spring such as boron tube or diaphragm. Thus, it will cause an error in measurement. If I use large bulb, the error will be reduced because the change in bulb volume which is coming from the effect of temperature of the medium which I am going to measure will be more compared to the volume change in the capillary or spacer spring which is done by the effect of ambient temperature. So, by making the bulb of the pressure thermometer large, we can reduce the effect of ambient temperature. We have also seen that temperature compensation is possible. We have talked about 
full compensation we have also talked about case compensation or partial compensation in case of full compensation you take an exactly identical element which we call compensating system and connect them in opposition. So, the compensating system will subtract the additional deflection caused here due to effect of ambient temperature. The case compensation or the partial compensation is achieved by putting a biometric spring which is suitably designed so that the deflection caused in the biometric spring is equal and opposite to the def additional deflection caused in the spacer spring by the ambient temperature. So, the effect of ambient temperature can be reduced by using large bulb or by using full compensation or case compensation techniques. The effect of elevation or head effect or elevation effect. When the thermometer bulb is placed at a different height with respect to the pressure spring, an elevation error will occur. So, this is the bulb and this is the pressure spring. Note that they are at different elevations. So, there is an additional pressure head which is a source of error. So, when the thermometer bulb is placed at a different height with respect to the pressure spring an elevation error will occur. If the thermal bulb is above the pressure spring the hydrostatic head of the filling fluid will be added to the total pressure at the bodon element. If the bulb is below the pressure spring the hydrostatic head will be subtracted from the total pressure. Therefore, the reading will be higher if the bulb is placed at a higher position we call it positive error and vice versa we call that negative error. So, if the thermal bulb is placed above the pressure spring the hydrostatic head of the filling fluid will be added to the total pressure of the bodon element. If the bulb is below the pressure spring the hydrostatic head will be subtracted from the total pressure. Therefore, the reading will be higher if the bulb is placed at a higher position and the reading will be lower if the bulb is placed at a lower position. We call this either positive error or negative error. The relative size of the error is a function of the size of the hydrostatic head relative to the total pressure. The barometric effect The barometric effect is caused due to change in atmospheric pressure. The deflection of the boron element is a function of the difference between the pressure of the filling fluid on the inside and the atmospheric pressure on the outside. Thus, the change in atmospheric pressure can result in measurement errors. The barometric pressure can change by about 0.5 psig or 25 millimeter of mercury. This may or may not be large enough to introduce an error depending on the filling pressure. So, the barometric effect is caused due to change in atmospheric pressure. The deflection of the boron element depends on the pressure inside the boron tube and the pressure outside the boron tube. 
the pressure outside the boron tube is the pressure of the atmosphere. So, if the atmosphere pressure changes, the deflection will be changed. So, thus the effect of change in atmospheric pressure can introduce an error, but this error will be large or small will depend on the filling pressure. The immersion effect, we have talked about partial immersion, total immersion when you talked about liquid in glass thermometer. We are now looking talking about field system thermometers. If the thermometer bulb is not fully immersed in the medium whose temperature I am going to measuring and the head of the bulb is not properly insulated, heat from the bulb is lost due to conduction through the extension neck and thermal well. This will cause an error in reading which is called immersion error. Immersion error is approximately proportional to the unexposed area of the bulb. So, the bulb has to be fully immersed so that immersion error is reduced. The radiation effect, radiation error occurs due to temperature difference between the bulb and the solid bodies around it. Now, let us talk about a pneumatic transmitter that can be obtained from a field system thermometers. So, the question is how do I convert a field system thermometer to a pneumatic transmitter? That means, the output of the field system thermometer should be a pneumatic signal. The schematic shows how we can do this. You have the gas field bulb, let us say we are talking about a gas thermometer, we are talking about a gas field field system thermometer. So, you have a gas field bulb, this is the capillary and the other end we have this diaphragm. We can also have a bodon tube here, we can also have a bodon tube, we could have also had a bodon tube here. So, the pressure spring, the pressure spring taken here is diaphragm element. Now, note that I take out help of a flapper nozzle system to get a pneumatic transmitter out of a field system thermometer. So, I have attached a force balance beam to the diaphragm and this is a flapper nozzle system you have the nozzle, you have the air supply and you have the output pressure. We have also used the feedback bellows which is connected to the force balance beam. So, we have two force balance beams, one is connected to the diaphragm, another is connected to the feedback bellows. both are placed on these two pivots. Now, the way it will work is as follows. An increase in bulb temperature causes the flapper to move closer to the nozzle. So, if there is an increase in the bulb temperature, 
this flapper will go closer to the nozzle. This will increase the nozzle back pressure, this will increase the output pressure which increases the force exerted by the feedback bellows. The system returns to equilibrium when the increase in bellows pressure exactly balances the effect of the increased diaphragm pressure. The bulb temperature is directly related to the output air pressure. So, an increase in bulb temperature causes the flapper to move closer to the nozzle increasing the nozzle back pressure. This increases the output pressure which increases the force exerted by the feedback bellows. The system returns to equilibrium when the increase in bellows pressure exactly balances the effect of the increased diaphragm pressure. The bulb temperature is directly related to the output air pressure. So, basically you attach a flapper nozzle system to the pressure element. Now, let us take a numerical example to understand more about the error associated with the field system thermometers. So, mercury in steel thermometer uses a board on pressure element which has a range of 0 to 5 mega Pascal for the pointer rotation from 0 to 250 degree Celsius. During temperature calibration, the pointer movement was set to 0 degree rotation at 0 degree Celsius and the instrument indicated 225 degree rotation corresponding to 200 degree Celsius. The volume of the bulb is 8 times that of combined volume of capillary and the Bodon tube. Determine the sensitivity of the thermometer expressed in radian per degree Celsius. The error due to rise in ambient temperature of 20 degree Celsius, the error in measured temperature if the bulb is raised by 50 centimeter from the calibration elevation. So, we are given a marker in steel thermometer. The thermometer uses a bodon tube as a pressure sensing element. The range of the bodon element is 0 to 5 mega Pascal for the pointer rotation of 0 to 250 degree Celsius. During temperature calibration, the pointer movement was set to 0 degree rotation at 0 degree Celsius and the instrument indicated 225 degree rotation corresponding to 200 degree Celsius. Given that the volume of the bulb is 8 times that of the combined volume of capillary and the bodon tube. We have to determine the sensitivity of the thermometer in radian per degree Celsius. The error due to rise in ambient temperature by 20 degree Celsius, the error in measured temperature if the bulb is raised by 50 centimeter from the calibration elevation. So, how do we solve this problem? Now, the sensitivity of the thermometer can be found out by total angular displacement divided by the temperature change. You have to express in radian per degree Celsius. So, I have to express total angular displacement in radians and I will divide that by temperature range. So, so, sensitivity of the thermometer 
sensitivity of the thermometer which is mercury and steel thermometer can be found out by total angular displacement in radians divided by temperature range. Now, temperature range 200, 225 into pi by 180 to convert it to radian. So, this will be 0 0.0196 radian per degree Celsius. So, this is how we can find out the sensitivity of the thermometer. Now, let us try to find out error due to rise in ambient temperature by 20 degree Celsius. So, the error increases, the temperature ambient temperature increases by 20 degree Celsius and we know that there will be error due to increase in ambient temperature. So, how to find out the error that will be caused due to increase in temper ambient temperature by 20 degree Celsius. So, the volume change in the capillary and the bottom tube due to change in ambient temperature we will introduce an error in the readings. To find this error we have to calculate the temperature rise in the bulb that will cause the same volume change in the bulb. So, if we define alpha as coefficient of volumetric expansion and V as the volume of capillary plus bottom tube. So, V is volume of capillary plus bottom tube and alpha is the volume expansion coefficient. Then we can write alpha into 8 V into delta T error is equal to alpha into V into delta T ambient temperature. ambient temperature. We are just equating the volumes. The so, we have to calculate the temperature rise in the bulb that will cause the same volume change in the bulb. So, delta T error can be calculated now as alpha V alpha V gone delta T ambient temperature divided by 8 and this is 20 by 8. So, this is 2.5 degree Celsius. So, the error is 2 point error is 2.5 degree Celsius due to change in ambient temperature by 20 degree Celsius correction is minus 2.5 degree Celsius. And finally, we have to find out 
the error in measure temperature if the bulb is raised by 50 centimeter from the calibration elevation. So, basically you have to find out what is the pressure exerted by a 50 centimeter column of mercury. Now, before I go that, before I go there, so this is how again we saw the sensitivity of the mercury thermometer can be found by total angular displacement in radians divided by temperature range which comes out at 0 0.0196 radian per degree Celsius. The second part was error due to change in ambient temperature and we calculate this by determining the temperature rise in the bulb that will cause the same volume change in the bulb. So, this is the volume change in the bulb and this due to the delta T error and this is the volume change in the capillary as well as Bodon tube due to change in ambient temperature. So, you equate that and from that I get delta T error as 2.5 degree Celsius. So, the error due to change in ambient temperature is 2.5 degree Celsius. Alternatively, we can say that the correction to be applied to the observed reading is minus 2.5 degree Celsius. We have to subtract 2.5 degree Celsius from the observed reading. Finally, to find out the elevation error, we have to find out the pressure exerted by a 50 centimeter column of mercury. We can find that out as rho g h. So, this is the density of mercury 13.69 gram per centimeter cube expressed as kg per meter cube g 9.81 meter per second square and 50 centimeter expressed as 50 by 100 meter. So, this turns out to be 6.7149 into 10 to the power 4 Pascal or 67.15 kilo Pascal. So, the angular movement caused by 67.15 kilo Pascal pressure in the Bodon pressure element can be found out from this. this is the range 0 to 5 mega Pascal. So, 67.15 10 to the power minus 67.15 kilo Pascal is 67.15 into the minus 3 mega Pascal and 250 0 to 250, 250 degree Celsius corresponding to 5 mega Pascal. So, 250 into pi by 180 radian. So, this turns out to be 0 0.0586 radian. So, the error due to elevation effect in measurement can be now found out as angular movement due to elevation divided by sensitivity of the thermometer or angular movement due to elevation is 0 0.0586 radian and the sensitivity of the thermometer we have found out in part A which is 0 0.0196 radian per degree Celsius. So, this turns out to be 2.98 degree Celsius. So, the error due to elevation effect is 2.98 degree Celsius for a difference in calibration height of 50 centimeter. So, this, this is how you can find out the correction factors required for your measurements. So, this stops our discussion for week 7. In the next week, we will continue our discussion with temperature measuring instruments.